Oh, hi. I'd like to discuss alloys for just a moment. Alloys are made exclusively of metals. These alloys are a blend of metals. Things that are to the left of the staircase are metals and lose electrons. Alloys have been known for a long, long time. What we do to make alloys is go ahead and take one, two, three, four metals, put them in a cauldron, some type of porcelain dish, heat them up so that they melt, stir, and then we let them cool in a form or we extrude it. We stretch it out, pound it into shape. You might think of like an old metal worker making horseshoes or, oh, some type of like wheel that's round or something. A very common alloy contains iron and chromium. When chromium is added to iron, we make a steel that is often called stainless or surgical. The chromium helps the iron become very, very shiny and less pitted so that it's not really like rough, but it's rather smooth. Alloys. Oh, hi. I'd like to spend a moment or two talking about molecules. Molecules are constructed of strictly non-metals. So these things over to the right. Before we start, though, let's go ahead and do something. Maybe sacrilegious, but we're going to change the periodic table of the elements. Traditionally, hydrogen appears over here in group one, over with the metals. And while it's true, hydrogen can be made to act like a group one, a metal under some circumstances, we see predominant behavior from hydrogen to act as though it's in here, group seven or 17, and it acts like a non-metal. So on a periodic table of the elements, you can go ahead and fill in this little square and put an H there and remind yourself that hydrogen really does belong above fluorine so much of the time it behaves like a nonmetal. Having said that, some very common nonmetals that make up molecules are carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, because it's there now, and nitrogen. These molecules are discrete particles made up of nonmetals. For example, this is a molecule. It's constructed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It so happens, and you wouldn't be expected to know this, this has the name of methanol. Methanol. And up until recently, meth didn't have any other meaning than just one, com one, one carbon in it. And lately, though, meth has a very, what, cultural connotation. And alcohol. An alcohol ends with OL, so we have ourselves an OL ending. We have one carbon, meth, and an alcohol. Let me put one carbon up on the board attached to what we call an alcohol group. OH is an alcohol group. And this is almost complete, one carbon and OH. It's going to turn out, as we'll see later, that the nonmetals have a preferred bonding scheme. They like to connect in such a fashion. These like to make one bond or one line to them. These like to have two, three, and four. If you go ahead and include hydrogen here, students often remember honk, like to honk a car except spelled with a C, H-O-N-C. And the way that it goes is honk, one bond, two bonds, three bonds, four bonds. They use that as a memory technique. Having said that, hydrogen has one bond, fine. Oxygen has two bonds, that's fine. Carbon, how many bonds does it need? It needs four, but the formula says, oh, that's gonna work out just fine because this is saying that there are three hydrogens attached to this carbon. And this is the methanol molecule. Molecules contain strictly nonmetals. When we officially name molecules, we have to use some prefixes such in, these two molecules. These two both exist. When we talk about the formula for molecules, we can't play a charge game. We're not doing ionic compound treatment with like, ooh, minus four, minus two doesn't work out for us. So what we do is say there can be different combinations of nonmetals in our molecules. We have to tell people which one we're talking about. This one over here is often called carbon monoxide. carbon, and then oxygen becomes oxide. We give it the I-D-E ending. It's the non-metal at the end. And we're telling people there's one oxygen, so we use the prefix mono, carbon monoxide. Do you know what this one would be called? Carbon dioxide. 
carbon dioxide. And we have some prefixes we commonly use. Let's go ahead and as Chem 121 students put on our note card, prefixes one through six. Prefix for one, mono. Prefix for two, we've used it already over there, di. Prefix for three, tri. Prefix for four, there are several out there. Quad means four, we happen to use tetra. Five, you probably know what five is, like the uh, government building Washington DC, five sides, penta. And finally with six, we have ourselves hexa. If you're interested in knowing more, have a look real quick. Seven happens to be called hepta. Eight, as in octane, gasoline, octa. Nine is nona. And 10 is deca. Like a decade. I brought in a bottle of methanol. Methanol is very similar to ethanol. There's an M in front, so it's a little different. Methanol has the OH group attached to CH3. So you could think about it as being this molecule up on the board, but take out a CH2 group in the middle. And so methanol is CH3OH. I'll put some in these Frankenstein looking jugs. We put these together a few years ago. The tape is just for effect and we have a couple of nails that we shot through the sides of these uh, containers. Right now I know that the methanol is starting to evaporate. We have some uh, gaseous molecules of methanol inside the container. The nails are shot into the sides of the container here and they're separate by maybe about oh half an inch, maybe about a centimeter. And if I go ahead and bring a spark up to this, the spark will be transferred into the container and we'll have a spark and that could detonate the methanol. We'll give this one a try. That was a nice one. Wow. That one worked well. Interesting.